So we already know the basics of light and before we move any forward, like I said before, you are not going to uh, start setting up the lights if you don't know your composition. What I'm going to do now then is, is going to create a, a camera. So here in my right panel, next to light, I have my camera and I have uh, this uh, drop down menu that says V-Ray and originally here was the physical camera but now it's integrated so I can use the physical camera from 3D Max. Okay, and I'm usually going to do it first in the top view, just to this kind of composition. And then I rather usually select uh, both of them here, then a little bit higher. And if I want to see my camera, I can either go here in perspective and look for my camera, or I can just click on C. Okay, and I know this is my camera too, because I already had a camera there. Okay, and this is pretty much my view. So I can still pan, but I cannot really out middle, uh, middle mouse button and rotate, but I can do it here with this orbit camera. I can of course just move the target by selecting the target and I'm moving it uh, the way I want. Okay, but uh, this is a, a little bit more easy to control. And uh, let's go over the settings of my camera. So um, the ISO, if I put it um, low or high, it's not really going to create more noise. That's the difference with a real camera. I have all, all the settings of a real camera. Okay, let's start from the, from the top. I have my focal length and I'm gonna actually put it in 60. Okay, and um, because this is a studio setup, so maybe you are trying to go for something not so dramatic, which means I don't want too many angles. Since this is going to be like a close-up, then I'm going to put a shallow aperture, so about two, which is of course going to give me more light. Okay, and so I'm just uh, going to fix that with my shutter or with my ISO, because in this case I'm not animating, so I'm totally capable of doing that. I'm going to put it in one of a second, uh, so, so fractions of seconds. Uh, going a little bit back to my focal length, if I would like to specify my field of view, uh, this uh, refers to the angle of this uh, triangle, okay? So the, the, the higher my angle, the the more angular, but if you see actually how it, it changed my focal length, then I have a, a lens that is a lot smaller. So this would be already like a fish eye. Okay, and you actually see it here because it's creating the curve. I'm going to go back to my 60 millimeter lens. Okay, and in this case, as I said before, it doesn't really matter my speed because I'm not having an animation. Uh, to enable the depth of field, I can do it here, and I already see this part starting to be not sharp. Actually, nothing is it's really sharp, maybe this, and it's quite shallow, okay? I can use the target distance, the one that I have here on the top. Okay, and you see how small it is. If I actually increase my aperture, then I would have a lot more to play with, but then of course it's darker. So you already saw how I play with the aperture and the shutter. Uh, the same way you can enable your motion blur here. Um, but in this case, we don't have anything animated, so you are not going to really appreciate it. And the nice thing about the V-Ray RT is that now I can really observe the whole depth of field uh, here in real time, and before that was not possible. And to resume with this uh, short tutorial, um, I'm going to show you the V-Ray Light Lister. It's this, this uh, window, okay, I can access it going to tools. There is a light lister that is originally from 3D Max and I have my V-Ray light lister, okay. Or I can just go here in the V-Ray bar and I have my V-Ray light lister. And what I like doing there is uh, basically um, evaluating uh, the lights that I have. So I'm going to take them all off, okay, and I'm going to go with my key light first and I know how much light is going into the scene. And let's say I also, I actually want to see what my field light is doing. And this is kind of like already illuminating my sphere. So I actually want to have 
the, the shadow part. So I, I would, in theory, have to move my field light. But about my backlit, uh, this I really need to change because it's not a backlit anymore. And this is probably because I changed the composition. I'm going to take my backlit. Actually, I can go here on the V-Ray Light Lister and select it. Okay, and I'm going to move it because this really has nothing to do with my composition anymore. Okay, and that uh, it is not spilling so much, but it's already showing me texture here. I still uh, have to uh, twitch it a little bit more until I uh, achieve what I want. Okay, and uh, what you see is that once I have the fill light, maybe this is not obvious. Right now, this is burning uh, the hell out of this surface, so it's not what I want. But it's just so that you know uh, the idea behind it. And in every... Um, Studio setup, usually you actually just play with different lights and then compose it in Photoshop and you don't try to get the whole thing right from the beginning, especially if this is 3D.